So let's take some of these ideas one by one. First of all, when I'm wanting to write a subtle, I'm thinking about what target notes do I want to hit, okay? So this deals with a lot of the concept that's going around right now that's really popular is melodic soloing. Now, if we want to be creative in our soloing, we want to be able to make it as melodic as possible. How do you create a melodic solo? Well, the word melodic comes from melody. Obviously, we want to have some kind of melody that captures the attention of the listener. It kind of tells them, hey, pay attention to me. It's not just some random notes anywhere. We want something to tell a story, kind of weave, and kind of lead the, the listener on a journey. So to, to create melodic solos, basically what you need to do is to hit the target notes that correspond with the chord. So we're looking for chord tones. So if we're playing an F sharp five, obviously we need to play an F note. We need to look at the other notes that are contained in that chord. In any main chord that you're gonna have, they have what's called a triad, which is the main three notes. Basically, that's created by skipping every other note. Now, with F sharp, I'm not too, too good with the sharps and flats, but let's go with C, okay? So, for example, if we're in the key of C, if we go through the alphabet, we have C, D, E, F, G, okay? So, if I take the every other note, starting with a 1, C is my 1, C, D, E is my 3, 1, 2, 3, and then we have E, F, G is my five. One, three, five. That creates a C chord or a major chord of any kind. If it was F sharp, it would be F sharp is the one. The other two notes that are the three and the five on that scale, that will be the chord. Okay, so those are the main target notes we need to hit in the chord. If we we're playing a C chord and we have that C chord being repeated for four bars or however long it is, we can play scales and solo everywhere, but it's really important that we hit the one the three, and the five. Now, I'm not really concerned about what exactly the note names are. What I want to know is where are those intervals located on the guitar, okay? So for learning intervals, it really helps to look online and do some research on this. Uh, one great tool for this is a website called fachords.com. Now, as of this recording, it's up and running, functional, perfectly, no problem or anything like that. And it's a really great tool for helping you memorize the fretboard, learn different intervals and things like that. Intervals have types of shapes that they're easily recognized by. It's an easy concept to understand and they're easier to locate if you can kind of visualize them on the fretboard. But you want to locate, look at the one, the three, the five. If it's a seven chord, then we want to add a, a flatted seventh as well. If it's a major seven chord, we want to add a major seven. So any kind of chord tones are going to give us that melodic sound. If we hit those notes, they're going to be, you know, right on par. They're going to sound good to the listener because there's not going to be a lot of out of tune notes or anything like this. And I'll kind of give you a little bit of demonstration of this here in just a little bit when we actually go into watching me construct the solo. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it because I haven't even done it yet. Okay, I haven't even anticipated doing the song. I haven't even started on working on the solo. So we're going to do that with you right here. You're going to watch me do this in real time. Okay, so the chord progressions also give me some clues as to what kind of solo I need to construct. Well, the chord progression, it tells me here's some of the different notes that I need to add. There's an E slash with a G sharp. A G sharp is going to be a handy note because this is a slash chord, which means that that last note there is played on the bass. Okay, so you're playing a G sharp in the bass. So it's an inversion of an E chord. Okay, now if you don't understand what that means, you need to look up some basic music theory and basic chord theory. This That's too too big and exhaustive of a topic to cover here in this course, but it's very, very interesting. It really gives you some extra tools and assets to use when constructing solos and when learning how to play uh, in general. Okay, so we, we definitely need an A note here. We're gonna need a D, all right? So we're gonna play some D. D is, you know, a very easy open chord, right? It's a lot easier than F sharp, for example. Most likely, the way my ears are hearing this and when I'm looking at the chords and analyzing this right now, this little section that it has the, four, the first uh, main chords here is in the key of A because all these chords pertain to the key of A. The F sharp is the minor of A. The D is the fifth step if you're going by the Nashville number system. E is the main thing. That's Excuse me, that's the fourth. This is the E. This is the fifth step. And then we have back to the root, which is A. By analyzing that, I'm kind of seeing that this is an A major. Even though we're kind of like working on that F sharp and we're kind of going for that, a lot of these, we can play a lot of the same notes that are contained in the A major scale 
that has a D, it has an E, it has an F sharp and all this stuff and we can get away with but sounding pretty good if we did that. Now that's kind of getting and dabbling into the modes a little bit. I hope that doesn't confuse you too much. I'm going to try to make this a lot easier to understand when I start going over this myself. So target notes. We want to target the chord tones to make it more melodic, more pleasing to the reader. We want to look at the chord progressions, see kind of what kind of a roadmap gives us the sound that we're looking for. And I want you to ask yourself this question. Does the solo belong in this song? For one thing, I told you about the, the drum fill a while ago. I told you about the different things that I'm noticing. I want to complement the song. I don't want to take away from it by doing a lot of random stuff and playing all these fast licks and things like that. I want to complement the song. This is a really good example as well. If you want to ever play in a band, you want to complement the team members. Everybody wants to contribute to the song to make it the best song possible. You don't want to be, you know, the front man, all eyes on you. There's no eyes in team, right? There's no eye in band. So you want to complement the song. Does the solo belong in the song? It doesn't belong if it doesn't fit the song. So make your solo complement the song or the backing track, okay? Another thing, different nuances that I'm thinking about in the solo and that happen in the song. One of those was that drum feel. There's a little particular feel right after that F5 chord, probably about beat two. There's that do 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 terrible drum beatbox. But anyway, there is a drum feel there happening, and I want to do something that kind of matches that, that kind of ups the ante a little bit. Maybe it's a, a nice bend on a certain note or it's some kind of nice fast run that ends on that little drum feel. It could be a rhythmic thing. It could be just about anything you can think of. So I want to be thinking about that. Also, speaking of bends, I want to be expressive. What do I want for my solo? I want to be expressive. I want my solo to express my personality. Some of the best ways you'll ever learn how to express yourself and another way of kind of complementing that melodic feature of melodic playing is you got to have some really good bends. you got to bend in tune, practice your bending. You definitely want to work on vibrato. Vibrato is like the thumbprint or fingerprint of every guitar player. Think of Zach Wilde. If you're, if you're not familiar with some of these people, just go look them up. Zach Wilde has a vibrato that's just like really wavy. If you think of B.B. King, B.B. King has this really violin, cello kind of approach of a, of a, a vibrato, and he kind of really shakes his hand when he's doing it. The way I learned vibrato personally for me was through Eric Clapton. Just watching him play some of those solos, those soulful solos, is he would just caress that note and just make it sing. You hear the terms, he made the guitar sing, or he played a very lyrical solo. That's getting back to the melodical thing. Another way to think about this in melody is try to sing the solo. If you can sing it, the chances are you could try to listen to what you're doing and play that on the guitar. And if the guitar sounds expressive and you play those bends where your vo voice kind of bends up to another note, or your voice has a little warble in it where you're vibrating, you want to think of the guitar as a singer. What, the, what are those nuances that help you express those tones? I want my, my song, my solo to tell a story. I want it to be melodic. I want it to be rhythmic. You know, it don't have to be the same rhythm all the time because it gets monotonous. The drums have to do a lot with the rhythm, and so does the bass, but I'm hearing the drums a lot. You can hear the changes in the drums. Every time the thing repeats, there's something else that, th that the song does to let you know, hey, we're on a new stage. And by the time it builds to the climax, we have the drums you know, doing that feel. We have, if you'll listen to the guitars, they're chunking very low when it gets back in, and it transitions to that C sharp minor kind of sound. So be listening for things like that in your song or in your backing track, whatever that is. Another thing I know that I want to feature at the end, if I can make it happen, is to add a wah-wah pedal at the end. Because Patrici has this very deep, throaty, you know, gargly wah sound. And if I'm really wanting to affect a Petrucci-style solo, John Petrucci, then what I want to do is add that same kind of wah, okay? So we're going to go over a lot of that stuff. 